Hi everyone. Well, now we are going to implement um, the nearest neighbor search algorithm. So recall we have this class in where we implemented the function that builds the KD tree. Now we need to extend this in order to be able to perform the search. So the first thing we are going to do is to extend the capabilities of our node class because we need to save some extra information that is going to be useful for the tree traveling purposes when we search for a neighbor. So let's call this my node and uh, it's going to inherit from the node class So it's going to keep the ID as before, but now we are going to add new information. The data, in other words, the, the vector with all the numbers for the, that represent the node, the axis, because each node is located in a part of the tree that is related with one specific axis, right? And the index of the data vector that represents this node, the index in our data frame in order to make it easier to retrieve the data vector uh, when we already choose for a specific node. So always the first thing is to initialize the parent class, the base class, with the original parameter. And now we need to set our new variables. Okay, now we must change here because now we need to make sure that the way we build the tree includes this information. So instead of having node, we are going to use my node. So the ID is going to be the same we used before. But now we are adding these new parameters which is the data recall that this is just the data represented by the node in this case the median the axis is the variable represented by the axis in this case is column and Finally, the index in the database, which is exactly the median IDX, right? Okay, so now we have the, all the information that is going to be needed for the search. Now let's implement the search function. Let's call it. So this function is going to receive the query now we are basically implementing exactly the code that performs the search as we saw in the previous video in the example of the slice. The best node is the best node so far, also the best distance. We need also the node, the current node basically. So again, query is the, the point for which we are going to search for a neighbor. The node is the current node we are ex exploring. We call that we start with the root and then we go down the tree. Then the best node and best distance are the best ones we have so far. So the first thing is if the node is, is none, we're going to return the best node and the best distance. We have to calculate the distance between the query and the current node, we need to make sure that, uh, that we are providing with the correct data. We are assuming that query is a data frame row. And the node, recall that we extend the, the class, so the node has a field called data. And that data is, again, a vector. So this is why we need to do dot values. So we need to compare this distance with the current best. And we need to update. OK, so now let's decide for the side. Hmm. 
Recall that in order to decide which is the correct side or the good side, we need to see in which side our query is located. This can be performed with this uh, comparison. Right, so here we are checking if for the current axis, the query is smaller than the node. In that case, it means that the good side, so it's gonna be the left child, and the bad side is the right. In case we have the opposite situation, we just need to invert the nodes. After choosing the good side, we need to go down the three, right? So we're going to have to we call recursively the function here. So it's going to be the same query. Now the current node is the good side. We pass the the current best node and the current best distance. Recall from the previous video that besides going down into the good direction, we need to figure out if it is worth it to explore the bad side, right? So this is what we're going to ask here. So we check the value of the, of the current node and we compare it what we do here is we draw a vertical line remember when we draw a vertical or horizontal line to the current cat and then we compare if that line was smaller than the current best distance basically this subtraction here, it is calculating the distance of the query to the current vertical or horizontal line, right? And then we ask if this is smaller than the best distance, then it means we have to explore. Actually, it's gonna be very similar to this function. But here is the bad side. So finally, we just return our best node and best distance. Okay, now we need to create a function that is going to take care of calling the current function we just implemented. It's a simpler function that it is going to work as an in interface, basically. It just need, need the query point because the tree and all the other information is, is part of the, of the class. So we can do this. Here we are saying, we call the query, we pass the tree such that it starts in the root node. The current best node is none, right? It's an empty node. And the current best distance is infinity, such that the first time we uh, find any distance is going to be updated with that value. Let's try. Um, so we run the tree here. Let's create our query. We're going to use the same example we saw in the slides. So here we call the function. Oops, sorry. Rest is a tuple, right? The first component is a node. 
okay that's the id but if we do dot data we get that so we can see that is exactly the same pair we found in our example as the neighbor. We can add some prints um, to take a look to the execution of the example. For example, here we can show every time we update the best node. Here we go. So as we saw in the example, first we explored or we chosen as a first node the root that was 7,2. Then we picked the 5.4 and then the 